Hi everyone, the title of this talk is Building Your Module Empire, a romp through the Terraform Cloud Registry API. My name is Jeff Bonhag, I'm an engineer at HashiCorp, I work on Terraform Cloud, and today we're going to take a little trip through the Terraform Cloud Registry Modules API. Before we dive into the API, let's talk a little bit about where you can find Terraform modules today. Uh, you may be familiar with the Terraform public registry, uh, which is a great place to find lots of modules and providers. Um, in case you don't know, a module is just any bit of Terraform config that is reusable. Um, and having all these modules in one place where it's easy to discover and publish is a great way to get up and running pretty quickly without having to build all of your infrastructure configuration from scratch. So you also might have custom infrastructure, but you don't necessarily want to share your Terraform config with the entire world. Um, if you've used Terraform Cloud, you may have noticed there's a registry there as well. And this is our private module registry. So modules in here are only available to other users in your organization. And on Terraform Enterprise, these modules can even be shared with other organizations uh, in the same Terraform instance. So we're gonna look at how to actually get modules in there, types of modules that you can keep there. I'll do a couple demos showing you how to get all of your modules into one place and kind of create your own custom one-stop shop for modules. Um, so I would be remiss if I didn't mention a couple of really significant UI-driven workflows that you might be familiar with uh, if you've used the Terraform Cloud web app. Um, so publishing a VCS back module, uh, if you have Terraform modules in an existing repo in GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, uh, or Azure DevOps, you can pull those into the private registry. And it's pretty simple to get those up and running. You know, you've got your repo, connect to your VCS provider in Terraform Cloud, choose a repository, and then you just push your Terraform code, um, tag up those releases, and they'll get synced over and become available to your Terraform runs. Um, so remember, with the registry, we were kind of talking about, with the public registry, I mean, we were talking a little bit about discoverability. Um, so now we also have the ability in Terraform Cloud to discover public modules and save them into your organization. And now you can kind of keep everything in one place and start to curate a collection of public and private modules that you and other people in your organization use. So you don't have to flip back and forth between the public registry or Google, you know, what was the name of that module we used to set up databases. Um, you kind of have everything together and you can see the docs, inputs and outputs, anything that you'd be able to see normally. So, Back to, back to the topic at hand. Today we're gonna to just focus on two API workflows, saving a public module and non-VCS backed modules. So pushing a Terraform module right from your computer or maybe from your CI pipeline to Terraform Cloud. So let's take a look at how to actually get modules in there. So with a web app, um, it's pretty easy to save a public module. Um, you know, you might have a use case where you're trying to consolidate all the public modules you use. Um, you want to make it easier for other people in your, in your organization to discover these modules. Maybe you have a list that you've created someplace else, or maybe you even have Terraform code that you could parse to see which public modules you're using and save them all in one go. So again, you have this sort of like single source of reference for, for how to use those modules. Uh, API would be a great candidate for something like that. So in this request, um, we're specifying the registry name, uh, the namespace of the module from the public registry, which is probably going to be the GitHub user or the org that owns that module, then the module name and the provider. And we're, we're publishing that in this case in, into the registry of the HashiTalks build organization uh, in, that, in that URL there. So these records are kind of like pointers to the public modules. There's no ingress required. So the setup is instantaneous. Uh, setup's complete and we're ready to go. So let's take a look at this in action. So we've got our request. Um, the registry name is public. Uh, we've got our namespace, our name and our provider and I'm just piping it to JQ so it looks pretty. Um, we see it was created with a status of setup complete because again, we're not ingressing anything. 
Um, and then when we go to refresh our module list, uh, we see our module there. And it's got that tag that indicates that it's from the public registry. Uh, we can click on it, see inputs and outputs and examples and all that good stuff. Now with these modules, because we're not actually ingressing anything, we don't need to change any of our existing Terraform code that's using this module. So API, you know, another second API-driven workflow of publishing a private module um, is a little more in depth. So if you have some broadly useful um, custom Terraform code uh, that you're using locally, or maybe you're using it right out of a Terraform workspace, um, you might run into issues if you're trying to use it in multiple environments or workspaces or whatever. Uh, at that point, it, it's a good idea to maybe extract that into a module. So once you've got that module, you can publish it to the private registry. Um, there are a couple steps involved here. First, we have to create a registry module through the API. Um, we have to create a version for each version that we want to publish through the Terraform API. Um, then you basically just make an archive of your local Terraform module and then upload that archive to Archivist, um, which is, our Archivist is HashiCorp's data storage service. So in this case, uh, in this example, we're uploading a custom module to serve a static website from an S3 bucket, um, which I kind of <laughs> took from one of our great HashiCorp Learn tutorials. So the URL here is the same as in the public case. Uh, again, we've got our, our token there. Um, in this case, the registry name is private. Um, we don't need to specify a namespace here because unlike the public modules, um, that namespace will always be the same as the organization's name. So in this case, it's gonna be published under the HashiTalks build namespace. Uh, we do still need to specify a name and a provider. Um, you can really use whatever you want for a provider. In our case, it makes sense to use AWS since our modules resource are all AWS resources. Um, so after we make that request, we get back our response that indicates the module is in a pending state. Um, we've created a record for our registry module, but we haven't created a version. Um, so in other words, there's no actual Terraform code associated with this yet. And we can also see in this version statuses array um, that uh, we don't have any versions there. So let's create a version. Um, we are kind of, we're kind of digging into this registry module URL a little bit. Um, we've got the kind of metadata as part of the URL. Um, and I've just highlighted here that, you know, the particular module that we, that we're working with, you know, private HashiDocs build, AWS S3 static website bucket, and the AWS provider. So all we need to do here is specify a version number and just say, you know, we're going to create version 1.0.0 of our module here, passing that in as uh, attributes. Cool. So this is where things get a little more interesting. Um, the registry module version is created. Um, now it's got a status of pending, but we get back this mysterious link. Um, this is our archivist URL um, where we're going to actually put the Terraform code. And I think this link is good for something like 25 hours. Um, it does it does expire at some point. Okay, so we just tar up our Terraform code and put it to that URL. And that's it. So now when we go back to get our original registry module, um, now we see that status has changed to set up complete. And we have a version in our version statuses array, version 1.0.0, and it's looking good. All right, so let's see that in action. We've got our module and our first request to create the module. Should look pretty familiar by now. Um, okay, so when we run that, we see we get back our status of pending. 
and that empty version status is array. Um, you can see the module was published under the HashiTalks build namespace. And then when we go to refresh our module list, now we can see that module there and it's got the private tag. So at this point we can click on it, um, but we can't actually do anything with it because you know we haven't we can't we can't quite load it yet because we haven't made any of those versions. Um, so let's go back and create a module version. Cool. So there we are uh, with our URL, and we're going to create that kind of placeholder for the Terraform code uh, for version 1.0.0. And there we go. So we've got our uh, registry module version created. Now it's got a status of pending, and we can grab the archivist URL uh, to push up the code. Cool. And uh, if I can remember tar commands, always always a hard thing to do. Um, we can get that pushed up. Cool, and there we go. So we're just putting that to the archivist URL. Um, and then you can see that page automatically refreshes. Um, and now we can see our uh, configuration details there for our custom module, and it's ready to be used in uh, uh, Terraform runs. Cool, so I, I hope this has been helpful. Um, if you want to learn more about modules or using the Terraform Cloud API, check out our docs on HashiCorp Learn and the Terraform website. Thanks a lot.